Hello, so we have a question that involves a little bit of trigonometry and some calculus. And we have to find what does x equal in, in the form square root of p over q when theta is a maximum. So here we have an observer that's 1.5 units above the ground. And we have a painting of a height of two units that is two units above the ground. And the observer and the wall are x units apart. And theta is the angle in which the observer sees the painting. So to find what, what x equals when theta is maximum, first we have to find what theta is in terms of x. So let's define some of the lengths. So we can see that these two lengths right here the, are parallel to each other. These two lengths are parallel. So we can find what this length is here, right? Here. So 2 minus 1.5, that is 0 0.5. So we know that this length is 0 0.5. And also, we know that this length up here is also x. Now, theta is kind of in a weird situation right now because we don't exactly have a right uh, angle triangle to work with. So that's why we're going to use this triangle right here. And we're going to split the angles up into alpha and beta. So we'll call this angle alpha and this angle beta. So we can see here that, I'll use black pen, that theta is equal to alpha minus beta. Okay, so now we can find alpha and beta. Well, let's use tan because we have the opposite and the adjacent lengths. So tan alpha is equal to opposite over adjacent. Well, the opposite of um, alpha is 2.5. We get the 2 and 0 0.5, and that makes 2.5. And the adjacent is x. So we can see that here. And now we have beta. So tan beta, that is equal to, well, the opposite 0 0.5. And the adjacent is still x. So now we have these terms. And now let's uh, break that down even more, or um, I guess isolate alpha. So that would be alpha equals arc tan 2.5 over x. And I'm not going to use the term um, tan negative one because that's confusing because it's not actually 10 to the power of negative one that's completely different so that's why i'm just going to use arc 10 to avoid confusion and beta is equal to arc 10 uh, 0 0.5 over x now we can plug this in into the, this original um, equation we created So theta is equal to arctan 2.5 over x minus arctan 0 0.5 over x. And now we have theta in terms of x, but now we have to make it a maximum. So now we have to find the derivative of this equation. So we'll start out with d theta dx. And we'll find uh, we'll start with the arc 10 here. So if f of x equals arc 10x, then f prime of x is 1 over 1 plus uh, x squared. So we'll start with that, where our x is actually um, 2.5 over x. And we have to square that. And now we have to apply the chain rule. So we can see here that there's a 2.5x. That's equal to 2.5x to the negative 1. And the derivative of that is negative 2.5x the negative 2. We're applying this rule right here, where we have to move this negative 1 to the coefficient, and then we have to subtract 1 from negative 1, which is negative 2. So we can just put that over here, and now we have negative 2.5x to the negative to x to the negative 2. And now we can apply the same thing with this, minus 1 plus 0.5x squared, because this is 0.5 now. Make that look a little bit better. And now we can apply the chain rule. So now we have to, we can express um, uh, this fraction as 0.5x to the power of negative 1. And the derivative of that is 0.5x to 
x and negative 2, put that negative sign there. And now we can just put that in right here. But we see we have two negative signs, so we can just remove those, make this a plus. So 0 0.5x to the negative 2. And that is the derivative. So now we know the derivative of the equation, and now we can make it equal to 0. So then we can find out if it's maximum. So I can erase this that to zero and I see a negative here so we're just going to bring down on the other side so now we have 2.5 x to negative 2 over 1 plus bracket 2.5 over x close bracket squared and then we have 0 0.5 which is exactly the same on this side okay so now let's open up those so we see this 2.5 over x squared, well, that is the same as 2.5 x to negative 1 all squared, which is equal to 6.25 x to negative 2. So we're just going to use that. I'm just going to erase it here and there. And so for this side, it would be 6.25 x to negative 2. And for this side, it would be 0 0.25 x to negative 2. So now we're going to do some cross multiplication. So this will move over there and that will move over there. So 1 plus 0 0.25x to this negative 2. And then 2, I don't need to put brackets on the next one. Um, 2.5x to negative 2 equals 1 plus 6.25x to the negative 2, 0.5x to the negative 2. Now we're going to have to distribute terms. So 2.5x to the negative 2. We're multiplying by 1, so it doesn't change. Now we are going to have to multiply 2.5 and 0 0.25. So that will equal um, plus 0.625x to the negative 4. And over here, we're going to have the same thing because we're multiplying by 1. And for the second term, we're going to have to multiply 6.25 by 0 0.5. That's 3.125x to negative 4. Now, we have a whole bunch of negative exponents here, so I'm going to um, multiply by x to the 4 on both sides. So this will become um, sorry, 2.5x squared plus 0 0.625. And this side will become 0.5x squared plus 3.125. So now we can subtract 0.5x um, squared on both sides. So this will become um, 0 or 2x um, squared. And this side, well, we're going to be subtracting as uh, it's going to be 3.125 minus 0.625. So that's going to be 2.5. So now we can divide on both sides, and that is going to be equal to 2.5 over 2. And now we square root both sides, and that we're going to get an answer that looks like this. Now we're not finished yet, so let's move over here. So now we have this term. x equals square root of 2.5 over 2. Well, we have to express it in this, uh, this format, where p and q are integers. Okay, so now we're at this point where x equals the square uh, square root of 2.5 over 2. Well, that we can uh, multiply on both sides of the, um, the fraction here. So we get whole numbers or integers, um, 5 over 4. Now we can just only apply that square root to the top, the integer, or the top uh, numerator. And we will have the square root of 5 over 2 and um, yeah and we didn't use um negative we didn't use negative 2 because um distances can't be negative so it's, the answer is um, when theta is a maximum x equals the square root of 5 over 2 so now we have to prove that it's a maximum so what I've done here is I've um, I've written out our first derivative equation again and I've plugged in values of x that are slightly more 
is slightly less than the answer we got. So as you can see, when we set x to something that's slightly less than the answer we got as the maximum, we get a, um, a first derivative that is more than zero. And if we do it for an x value that's slightly greater, we get an x, um, a first derivative value that is slightly less than zero. So this is what it would look like. So when we decrease x, then we get, um, we get this slope here, which proves that it's not a minimum. And this is important because we, we could have, we, we may have gotten a value that was a minimum, which meant that it would look like this instead. But now we've proven that it's maximum. Thank you.